Welcome back, everyone. Toys is here, and I am back yet again for yet another McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse video. Very stoked for what we're going to be talking about today. We talk a lot about the Dark Knight trilogy, and we got a lot of the Snyderverse, but finally, we're going back to the movies that I particularly like and love discussing. Of course, we're talking about Batman Forever, and that, that is a Batman movie, of course, Batman 89, and then Batman Returns leading up until Batman Forever, and then we have Batman and Robin. But, hey, while Batman and Robin had some cool action figures, it still doesn't excuse most of the movie. It's so bad, it's great. That sort of deal. But Batman Forever, I absolutely loved because of all the tie-ins. You had the McDonald's, the glasses, the superhero sandwich. It was just an event at that time, at my particular age. Val Kilmer was Batman. You had Chris O'Donnell as Robin. Robin was finally going to be in the Batman movies. And of course, Jim Carrey as the Riddler and Tommy Lee Jones as Two-Face. And then you had the absolutely fabulous Nicole Kidman as Dr. Chase Meridian. You had Michael Gow was back as Alfred, of course. And then you had Commissioner Gordon, Pat Hingle. It was just a great time at the movies. It doesn't stop. As soon as the movie starts, you maybe have one or two areas where you're kind of, okay, there's a little story here and there, but it is non-stop, just comic book fun, and that is why I absolutely love Batman Forever. So we got some action figures to talk about, of course. So before we get started, as always, if you're interested in anything you see here, I will have affiliate links down in the description below. You can pre-order everything and hopefully, hopefully these will be out probably by the end of summer, perhaps even sooner because that Dr. Chase Meridian is... Uh, Anyways, we have a figure numero uno in the form of Val Kilmer's Batman. He will be sporting the bat suit with the soda modifications that they have not tested yet, unfortunately, because the Riddler destroyed all the other bat suits. However, it's a fine bat suit. It's a defining bat suit, of course, for Batman Forever, as he initially starts off with something more aligned with Batman 89, Batman Returns. It's all black. It's got the yellow bat symbol. I would love that figure as well with the Val Kilmer situation going on. But yes, we have the sonar modified suits, and it totally looks cool. Now, he does have a cloth cape. It looks to be the exact same figure as the five-pack movie Batman set, of which I don't have, so I'm stoked to have this one even more. Does it have a wired cape to it? That kind of remains to be seen. If we're going off the photos, it doesn't look all too wired. Fingers crossed there's a wire, but I let's just say hopefully. Hopefully there is a wire in there, but it is a cloth cape. Regardless, he comes with a bunch of bat gadgets. Get out of town. Not only that, but he comes with extra hands to hold said bat gadgets, like the grapnel at the beginning when he's dealing with Two-Face and the safe that's full of boiling acid. Then you have a batarang, and then you have that boomerang sort of egg battering kind of thing that he throws at Edward Nigma's the Riddler's box at the end and blows everything up and you know that whole ending to Batman Forever also of course like I said this is figure number one in the build a figure set for Batman Forever that's pretty interesting here he is all boxed up ready to go I'm very excited for this wave. This is gonna be this is gonna be fun. You have Batman and Robin, which was awesome, and now Batman Forever. This is this is something I'm very much looking forward to. Figure number two, of course, we have Chris O'Donnell as Robin. And for the most part, I think that they've gotten the costume right. Of course, some things translate better in certain situations. Not always the action figure form. Also in the aesthetics of McFarlane Toys' action figures with their whole diaperish crotch pocket sort of situation. But I would say the likeness. That looks like Chris O'Donnell. You got the big mask on him. The reds, the greens, the belt, the collar. In kind of looking at the movie and kind of looking at the stills and such, perhaps that orangey yellow kind of collar with the cape and everything might be a little bit off. But in the sense of lighting and how things look in the movie and then when you do a toy, I would say that it's fairly close. For me, I'm going, yeah, that's that's 
pretty much spot on, I think, to Robin. And what's nice is that he comes with a bunch of extra hands. I would have loved to have seen him get batterings and, of course, the grapnel and such. But you got some extra hands for Chris O'Donnell. Robin, of course, he gets the trading card, the stand, and a piece for the Build-A-Figure. And here he is all packaged up with the cape, which is, again, a cloth cape. Does it have a wire? I'm going to assume it does. It looks like it does, unless it's just the stitching. So you have the double sided black on one side and then the yellowish orange on the other side. So again, hopefully, uh, at least Robin has a wired cape, but it all remains to be seen. But much like Batman, if you need Robin, you can pre-order him now. We got Tommy Lee Jones as Two-Face. This is fun. And I like the suit. See, Batman Forever was very much a take on Batman 66, just ramped up to a thousand. And while it is very campy, corny, very sound effects when you when you're pulling somebody's whisker out of his mustache, it's all corny. But that's a comic book movie, and it doesn't pull its punches. Like it doesn't try to be overly serious but it has its cartoony moments as well. So it's like a give and take situation. And for me, that's fun. That's what a comic book movie should be. It's outrageous. It's outlandish. These people exist in this world and everyone is just okay with it. <laughs> Tommy Lee Jones, that was a great casting as Two-Face. The colors are there, the various tones, the leopard print, the zebra print, all the wildness of his suit is there and then you have the purple lips with his severely burned face because one could only assume he's been picking at it of course the hands are awesome extra hands of course one is gloved one ungloved and then his other hand which is a coin flipping hand and it looks like it's flipping and that is flipping awesome i love to see that especially for a two-face figure so again stoked on that that's Pretty much through and through, yes, one could argue well, a gun would have been nice, something like that, but they're not going to do that. I hate beating a dead horse about this. Warner Brothers, for the time being, will not let McFarlane put guns and other things into the box. It's not going to happen. That's what the accessory packs are for. He also comes with another Build-A-Figure piece for the old Build-A-Figure, and yeah, I have to say, all packaged up, ready to go. That's a solid-looking Tommy Lee Jones Two-Face. But now, now we got the main attraction here. This one I am particularly excited about. I loved Val Kilmer as Batman, and I loved Jim Carrey as the Riddler. A lot of people, especially growing up, they'd always say, oh, he was too much like the Joker. Well, because I was a little kid, and I wasn't really associating it with Gorshin and what he did with the Riddler, I get it now. There's lots of elements to that. There's lots of elements of Cesar Romero. It's the overly goofiness of 66, but Jim Carrey brought this very much unsettling tone to the Riddler. When you first introduce Edward Nigma and he's talking to Bruce Wayne about his idea with the brain drain box and all that kind of stuff, he looks like he's just, hey, hey, how you doing? You know, that like he's very friendly, and then he just snaps like you can see like no the world owes me everything and you got to give me an answer now and it's creepy so he's fun but menacing at the same time and i feel like more so than what two faces two faces kind of the more goofy character yes he's violent yes he's dangerous but there's something very unhinged about the riddler and that's what jim carrey really brought to the movie and through, <laughs> through all the poses that you see via McFarlane toys here. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And I love that he's got the, the main outfit that I would hope I would love to see eventually the more when he's first revealed, when he sneaks into two faces hideout, he's got the bowler hat and he has more of the suit kind of sort of Batman in the animated series, but kind of sort of Frank Gorshin's suit. And then you have this body suit, which yes, of course, Jim Carrey owned, and then it was just kind of a callback to Batman 66 as well. So it's fun, but much like I said, do the Val Kilmer alternate first suit when we first see him in the movie, then do other versions of Jim Carrey's Riddler. I would love to just see that all. The best parts about the Riddler are his accessories, and that's why I'm very excited when I talk about this, because 
there are accessories in the box that match this figure. You don't need another Riddler when you have the Riddler cane, which looks fantastic. You have extra hands. That's awesome. And then you have that little green question mark bat bomb that when he throws it, you know, it goes squeak and then it blows up. Love those. That is an accessory as a kid that I always wonder. I'm like, why don't the toys come with that? So for that alone, McFarlane Toys, fantastic job. That was an excellent call putting that in there. And then you also get this giant part of the whole Build-A-Figure, which is uh, going to be interesting, I will say, as the Nightmare Bat. And yes, if you put all the pieces together, if you're not familiar with Batman Forever, there are elements of this still left in the movie, but they cut out a huge segment. You can still watch it on YouTube if you want, but it explores the dynamics of Bruce Wayne. Why would he give up being Batman? Why does he want to be Batman? And there's this huge, for the movie, animatronic bat that they made and it looks amazing so mcfarlane toys has created that as the build a figure and i know a lot of people have said like why didn't they do the giant box for uh, the, the riddler makes you know that could be the build a figure or <laughs> i was i rewatched the movie before i did this video and i'm like oh okay why don't you do the the bank vault guy from the beginning of the movie or chase meridian why though why why do that alfred why make them the Build-A-Figure when you can do those figures off on their own? Perhaps they come with an accessory or perhaps they come with a vehicle, right? Something like that. That's what I want to see. To do something like this Nightmare Bat, which is huge. It has a stand. It is so massive that it needs to be supported like that. It's an element of a deleted scene or deleted idea from the movie but it's very cool, and it really presents it more. If you display all these out, you have that bat in the middle. It brings a little bit more of that Batman movie magic, which I don't think you get a lot of the times with these action figures. So for Batman Forever, for this type of Build-A-Figure, which essentially is the Burtonverse slash Schumacherverse man bat, and that alone is kind of why I like it. I think that that's kind of an interesting idea. You could just say it's man bats at the end of the day, and no one would really say anything. It's a huge, giant bat, and if you had the context of the movies, I would assume, yeah, that's probably what they would go for for man bat in a realistic setting if it was done still back in the 90s. So I like it. I definitely want to see more characters from Batman Forever, I want to see Sugar and Spice. That would make it oh so nice. Just <laughs> saying that. Commissioner Gordon, the sky is the limit. Keep making these fantastic old school Batman film characters in the action figures. I think they do well. But again, not everything is going to sell as well as probably these four. These are the core four of the movie. I would even love to see some Two-Face gang members. That would be kind of cool. With the guns, with the light up Tommy guns and the, you know, when they're getting electric, <laughs> it's like the dumbest thing ever, but so corny, but so much fun. And really, I am excited for this wave. So yes, definitely day one pre-order for me. You have heard my thoughts and now I'm curious to know yours. So comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything Batman forever. Tell me about the movie. Did you get the McDonald's glasses back in the day? How was the superhero sandwich? Let's talk about it all. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, see, for me, while a lot of people are like, you didn't like the Dark Knight trilogy, mm, that's not what I said. But there are elements of Batman Begins that really resonated. But to go back and see these old campy movies, they're fun, they're easy to watch, whereas most of the Dark Knight trilogy... Yeah, it's it's just not like, oh, let's just pick it up and have a great time. These are a fantastic fun time still to go to the movies. And when we do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.